Savannah, it's so good to see you in person. I know. Right? So good. Um, it feels good. And we've known each other a while. You originally were my assistant yes. at NBC News. I know. And one of our first shoots ever that you let me come on, which was one of the most amazing parts of my earlier career, letting me come on these shoots. And it was in this space. I haven't been back here since then. And here it was we are. Right it's here. meant to be. We're talking about mental health today. And I, you and I have talked about this off a camera a million times. How do you think things have changed? Because I, I have, I'm older than you, so I have a real perspective on like what has changed over the last 20, 30 years. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, even in the nine years that I've been, you know, out, out of college and yeah. into this career, it's totally changed. I mean, I think back to when I was in college, I didn't for my own self, seek out therapy. People weren't talking about it, and this was less than 10 years ago. And now I would absolutely say, you know, I go to therapy, how much it's helped me. And I think we're all having that conversation now, which does help so many people. And I think also just for people who maybe haven't experienced it themselves, that exposure to the conversation helps people who are struggling so much when they're going through it because it allows people to have this empathy towards them. But I think it's totally changed. I hear that from viewers sometimes, um, that when we t we talk about things, we're just regular human beings like everybody else, yeah. but when we talk about things, it almost normalizes it mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I am in therapy also. I'll just, you and I together, yeah. <laughs> right? There we go. Um, I think in my career, I just see so clearly how things have changed. Mm -hmm. I started covering as a reporter covering mental health issues, really, you know this, really after my father-in-law mm -hmm. passed away by suicide. Mm -hmm. it, I, I mean, I can't put in words how horrific it was for all of us living through it. And I felt so helpless. Mm -hmm. And we all felt so, so like, what did we do wrong? Which is, I know now, not the question to ask, yeah. but it is what you instinctively ask. And then you think, well, what can I do? And we got to a point in my family where I remember my in-laws saying to me, you have the platform. Mm. So it's mm -hmm. okay now to say something about it. And that's kind of what drove me into covering mental health issues in the first place. And can I tell you, nine years ago when we met, this was one of the first things that you shared with me, mm. which I remember really? at that point being like, wow, for you to be talking about that at a time when it, it's almost shocking to hear somebody just be open about it. It makes me emotional now. Like yeah. even, oh, I you know, bet. still oh my goodness, 10 absolutely. years later. Yeah. The other thing that I think that we both have also reported on and we've also talked about and anybody on the planet has just experienced that's changed in the last 10 years is social media. My first real on-air job here was hosting a Snapchat show, so I get the positives of it, for real. You're all over social media. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I mean, like, it gave me my job, and I think that's a really good example of my news show on there being, right. you know, a, a use for a good reason. And it's a way for people to connect, exists. right? Yeah. It's connection, human um, connection. Yes. So I have, I'm a mom yeah. of a 16 and 19 year old right Zach now. Zach and Abby. Yes. Zach and Abby. <laughs> so we have lived the social media thing, and as a reporter, I'm doing stories all the time, and you are too, about the negative impacts. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are measurable you know, studies that have been done to show increases in stress around being dependent on social media and feeling like you're missing out on what your friends are doing and yeah. all those, those negative self-image things that can happen. I'm not saying it's the only thing to blame, but I think you know there's there's academic research that shows it's part of the mix right now. There's just so many things that are intertwined about it that have just such an intense impact on our mental health. Can we talk about the pandemic? Yes. There's so many levels, I think, of psychological impact of the pandemic that I think they're gonna be studying it for oh, decades. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And if you think about every single life phase, whether it's kids and the concerns we have now about their development, not being with other kids in the classroom, whether it's young adults who, we're alone during this whole period and, and haven't met someone that they want to be with or older people being alone. I mean, every single life phase had some type of difficulty, uniqueness to it, this sort of aspect that made it feel really hard. I do think the pandemic, though, also opened eyes, at least mm. for me. Like, mm -hmm. it opened my eyes and made me think more about my own habits yeah. and my own yeah. things that I could control, right, mm -hmm. frankly, in my life to try to stay in a better place mentally. Um, I'm not saying I'm perfect. <laughs> I yeah, definitely am yeah. not, but I tried to get outside mm -hmm. at least once a day. I was very intentional about like taking walks in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Present day, I'm a big fan of like working out and running and just like that release yeah, absolutely. is a big part of what I try to do for, for my own mental health. What, what are some of your things? Yeah. For me, and this is something that might sound silly, but it actually is something that, that 
helps me a lot, and it helped me during COVID too, is practicing gratitude, but doing so in like a really intentional way. Because I, I totally struggle with my mental health. In my day to day, you know, it's like, what's next? And you get kind of muddled down in these things that do really start to kind of narrow my vision. And for me, that's a lot of times what my anxiety starts to feel yeah. like. It's like a tunnel that kind of closes and this is all I can see is the worst case scenario, right. basically. And then when I'm in a better headspace, that kind of opens up and I'm like, oh no, there's this whole world of well, it's possibilities. Gratitude, right? it's and that's where the gratitude comes in. What exactly. And coming here and having a moment like that, that's like, what was I stressed about earlier? Like, I'm doing okay. Like in nine years, I get to be on this shoot with Kate here having this conversation with you. And it's those moments of really being like, I'm grateful for what has happened and not thinking about what's going to happen next. That has really helped me. And it certainly helped me in the pandemic when we didn't know what was coming next. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing for me personally, that's helped me a lot. It's, it's not feeling so self-critical all the yeah. time. Like I find that one of my go-to's is I should have, I should have, I should have. Mm. And I had somebody oh. say to me, stop shooting all over yourself. I love stop that. Stop shooting <laughs> all over yourself. And I find myself doing that and I have to kind of stop myself and go just like center for a second and you're, you're fine. Wow. You're, you're doing the best you can. One of the things that also helps me that I'm so grateful that this conversation has become much more mainstream is knowing that you're not alone. And the only way that you can know that you're not alone is by talking about it and by other people talking about yeah. it. And I think it's been pretty amazing that we've seen celebrities, athletes, Olympians oh, yeah. coming out and talking about it and making this space right. to take care of yourself and to say, hey, yep, I'm going through this and have other people say, hey, that means that if they could do it, I certainly could do it. And the other thing that I've thought is so striking as we've seen more people talking about it, especially with athletes and Olympians is, when one of them is physically injured, I mean, there's no question how oh, yeah. intensely they are cared for. And they're immediately like on the court, on the field. There is a doctor there. We, we witness with our own eyes the care that goes into that. Mental health is just as important. Mental health provides our physical health. And so to see athletes take that as seriously, I think is such a good message for young people, for young people who look up to them, and just for all of us to think, oh my goodness, this is just as important. I always say, we all have brains. Like, mm -hmm. We all have mental health. Why is it different when we're talking mental health? Mm -hmm. Like, Why do people suddenly feel like, oh, I can't talk about that issue, no. Right, right. It's the same. It really is like, how did we get to a place where it became so taboo? And it's so good to see that it's not. Swinging back anymore. there. Yeah. Well, this has been such a great conversation that has actually really helped me too. Your tips. I feel better, actually. I feel better. And I'm going to think about some of the things that you said. And it's just, it's so great. I hope that this provides for anybody who listens to it that little bit of a reprieve and to know that they are not alone. That's right. Which is so important. And also, there are more resources on themoreyouknow.com as well for all these. Types oh, good. Of things.